So this is Mid Calder Weir, um, where a fish pass solution is currently being installed. Our magnificent wild salmon have fought their way up our rivers and fired our imaginations for thousands of years. But they are now on a path to extinction. For centuries, people have created physical barriers to their very existence. Barriers come in all shapes and sizes, from large-scale industrial dams to much smaller structures, such as pipes or tunnels under roads, paths or railways. Some have historical significance, but many are now redundant as their original use is no longer relevant. All barriers can prevent or delay our wild salmon from returning to their natural spawning grounds. As salmon numbers dwindle, the removal of these barriers is one of the simplest and most urgent ways we can help our wild salmon recover. Large-scale hydroelectric power generation started in Scotland during the mid-1900s. Large dams were built, and at that time the main focus was ensuring that adult salmon could move upstream. It's now clear that there's often a problem for young fish moving downstream on their journey to the sea. The hydro schemes here went in in the 1950s, and by the 1960s they realised it was a major issue in terms of small passage. The message seemed to get lost that there was a an issue with downstream migration. It's been revisited in, in the last um, sort of 15 years or so. Thousands of fish were implanted with small pit tags. Uh, they're the same tags that your dog has in them. Um, and they were released back into the tributaries of Loch Shin. And we had a decoder in the Shin Diversion Dam. Now this decoder would record smolts migrating to sea. However, the rates of fish that were successfully getting to that decoder were unnaturally low. And this sparks us to try and mitigate for the small passage issue. What we do at the moment to mitigate is we use a trap like this rotary screw trap here and catch fish before they get into Loch Shin. We then will tag some but we'll drive them down below the dams and release them to continue on to their seaward migration. There has been some successes in terms of, for example, restoring uh, salmon populations to the FIAG here, but there are other parts of the catchment where we, we don't have that success yet. But we will have that success, I believe, uh, if we can manage to get proper equipment and proper regulation of, of the industries that operate elsewhere in this catchment. So there, there is a really a golden opportunity, an absolute golden opportunity to do the best thing for the fish population, to correct a lot of these problems that we have here that have existed for 50 or 60 years and to put it right once and for all. We have a really well-known tourist hotspot in this catchment, the Falls of Shin, where people come to see the salmon leap during the summer, which is a magnificent sight and we get a lot of visitors to the area but I kind of wonder if the people standing there watching these wonderful fish leap at that falls have any idea of the effort that's going in to keeping the fish there in terms of population restoration the work that the likes of us are doing but also there's a lot of work that anglers are getting involved in and all our conservation efforts without support for these efforts other tourist attractions like that might not survive. So we've seen some of the work that is underway to mitigate the impact of large-scale hydroelectric dams. Addressing these issues needs continued big investment and robust regulation, but barriers come in all shapes and sizes. Now we're going to hear about some smart thinking from fisheries managers in Ayrshire. They have installed simple and cost-effective solutions to allow our wild salmon to reach parts of rivers that were previously cut off.
For years we've been surveying this, this burn and not finding salmon and not really finding trout so the, there were several problems, there was enrichment, there was pollution, um, there was barriers. We figured that if we could get the barriers eased and get the fish up, SEPA have managed to get some fencing in um, or encourage farmers to put fencing in. Um, so there's potential scope for improvement now and, and fingers crossed we'll see that in the results when we start electrofishing to monitor this. But this was a very simple quick solution, cost about £5,000. So from here there was a 47 metre barrier, just a concrete bloom uh, that fish found very difficult to, to get over and beyond. So you will see that, that these baffles just break up the flow, slow the flows and allow fish to, to migrate beyond. We found that the, the, these baffles didn't hold back enough water. So we, we added HDPE blue barrel plastic um, bolted onto the face of that uh, and that just creates enough depth and slows the flow enough to allow fish to, to come over. This was the most difficult bit, not really that difficult, but they can get round it much easier now. So um, it's very simple, it's very cheap, commonly available materials that anybody can, can source. This would support fish if we can get them back up. And the whole aim of this is to get fish back up here into the deeper pools where we can. Sometimes there is no cheap and simple way to remove the man-made barriers that impede our wild salmon from moving up rivers. We head to the 4th district now to find out about a catchment scale barrier project to allow salmon access past multiple historic weirs on the River Almond. It's great to be here at this time of year, at a time when fish are migrating up through the river. This is the first barrier that they come to on the River Almond here at Cramond and in times gone by they would have not been able to ascend the three metre high weir as it is. But now the fish can come up through to the bottom of the fish pass, up the first flight to a pool where they can rest and then over the top of the weir. In addition around the side is an eel and lamprey pass which helps the weaker swimming fish get over the weir. Part of this uh, work has thrown up an interesting debate which, which is to do with the balance of priorities between the built and natural environment. In amongst this, it has been found that sometimes the historic human interventions of the past are of a higher priority than the natural environment which was there before they were put in place. Even with Scottish Government backing and the input of two local authorities, the time taken to establish the work that needs to be undertaken, procure the work, get it on site and actually get the work delivered has taken longer than anyone would have imagined when we started the project in 2009. At a time when we're trying to find more sustainable and resilient solutions, we should always ensure that we look at the hierarchy of these fish passage solutions, which is removal first, more naturalised solutions like a rock ramp second, and only look at these technical solutions as a last resort where we're trying to balance other priorities. So these are the precast units. They'll be all slotted together and bonded together. And then the Larinier baffles will go into the bottom of the sections with a pool as well. It's two flight Larinier, as we'll see when we go out there. So this is Mid Calder Weir, um, where a fish pass solution is currently being installed and is on site at the moment. And as soon as the fish get to the weir here, they'll be able to run straight into the fish pass and up into the river system above. There'll be uh, two smaller eel fish passes put on uh, to help the, uh, the less strong swimming fish and the uh, original box fish pass which was put in in the 1960s will also be decommissioned. This fish pass will be owned by West Lothian Council who will have an obligation to maintain it um, once it's in operation. If a fish pass or a solution becomes blocked then all the investment that has been put into undertaking the physical work is lost. Ultimately, the owner of a barrier and weir is responsible to ensure fish passage is maintained. This should be part of the regulation and the, any car licensing which is undertaken to manage and maintain these weirs. Across the 4th District, we have over 60 barriers 
which don't have a responsible person identified through a car licensing process. This means that they themselves are not aware that they are responsible to main, maintain fish passage and there is no regulation requiring them to do so. So one of the most exciting things about this project is how you can make a natural solution sit so comfortably within an infrastructure and historic environment. This is Howden Rock Ramp and because we could not remove the weir, um, otherwise the bridge upstream would have been compromised, a sustainable and resilient solution was installed, generally known as a rock ramp, where the bed of the river is raised up artificially with pools to allow fish, all species, to travel across the section of the river at almost any time of the year. So fish coming to this part of the river just below Livingston have the opportunity to swim straight through up the rock ramp through either of the two low flow channels and straight through Livingston and up to the two tributaries above. Once they're past this section, with the exception of Seafield which is to be undertaken this year, they have free access to the upper catchment of the River Almond and all fish species can get through at any time of the year. In terms of cost, it is slightly more expensive from a capital works perspective to deliver than a straightforward Lerunier solution. However, if you take the whole life cycle cost of the solution and the lack of resource and maintenance which is required ongoing over a 50 to 100 year time period, then this would be in the more cost effective solution to, to deliver. The ability for a river to move sediment downstream is very, very important in terms of the way that rivers work to allow them to respond naturally and provide habitats for a whole range of species. And by installing this kind of structure, we support that process um, instead of just allowing it just to be a single species solution. So projects like these are a high priority for Scottish Environment Protection Agency which are coordinating the delivery of the river basement management plans which was part of the Water Framework Directive from the EU. And despite Brexit and our leaving of the EU, it is still a priority for these works to take place. It wouldn't have happened if everybody hadn't got together to do a catchment-wide project. Without that community buy-in, without people's understanding of wanting the, to be part of the river and the river to be part of their lives, then this would not have been a success and probably wouldn't have even have been delivered in the time scale that we're talking about now. Whilst we are discussing many of the intricacies of delivering these types of project, our salmon and other important iconic species for Scotland are stuck below these weirs at the mouths of our rivers, unable to access good habitat to ensure their survival. At a time when we have a wild Atlantic salmon crisis, it's really important that these works are now delivered effectively and at pace and that all, all stakeholders work together to ensure that the funding and the decision making is in the right place. Barriers in our rivers are one of the most visible pressures that our wild salmon face. Ensuring free passage of fish has been a priority for the Scottish Environment Protection Agency, Scottish Government and fisheries managers for many years and we've seen some fantastic examples of projects to help our wild salmon. Scotland has an ambitious target of addressing all identified barriers to fish migration by 2027. Achieving this target will be difficult and will take a huge coordinated national effort. But the benefits to our wild salmon, our rivers and the wider environment will be enormous. <laughs>